Really appreciate you guys coming in. Um, here local, you're from Lexington, right? Yes, I live there now. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, actually. Okay. Originally, my whole family still lives there. What made you make the trek so out here? I went to Moorhead State University mm. um, under a soccer scholarship. Okay. And then um, worked in pro soccer all around the country for a while. And then in the middle of 2020, my husband and I got pregnant and we just did a quick career change. I just became a pregnant mama <laughs> and moved to Lexington and settled down there. Nice. That's kind of still what I am, just a stay-at-home mom. So being in the, you know, obviously the world of athletics, you, you kind of get the concept of like going all in in a way, you know, doing what it takes, yeah. putting in the hours, putting in the work. I mean, is that kind of, did that pretty much just easily translate over for you when you started to kind of get into the fitness side of things too? Yeah, for sure. I was a gymnast um, growing up from three until I was uh, 14. And then that's when I switched to soccer. And everyone was like, oh, if you don't change to soccer at like 10, you'll never get a Division One scholarship. You'll never do anything with that. And then it was kind of fun to prove everyone wrong. Um, so again, got that scholarship to Moorhead. Um, and then from there worked with the U S soccer federation and lived in Los Angeles, California for 14 months, not a California girl, uh, definitely more of a Midwest girl. And then from there moved to Chicago and worked with the federation with the, uh, men's and women's full national teams. Um, just giving you all my story now. Then went to Kentucky, got my master's degree, worked in the athletic department for about a year and a half and then worked in pro soccer for the Chicago Fire Major League Soccer team for two and a half years until the pandemic in 2020. We were, like, sent home one random day, and, like, it was the Monday after St. Patty's Day because, like, all of Chicago was just alive, as everyone knows how Chicago throws down during St. Patty's. And then literally Monday, it was, like, the world shut down. So they immediately sent all of us. We showed up to work that Monday morning, and then they just, like, told all of us to go home. And then... Like August is when we just up. I mean, we were still working from home, and I just we just up and left and packed our stuff and came to Chicago or Lexington. <laughs> so yeah. How did you two actually end up meeting? Kind of through Instagram. I was following her and uh, complimented her. I mean, she was I think with Tyler Besson at the time. Um, it was a couple of short exchanges, but it ended up being the seminar that really brought her in to Louisville. And um, so we had a seminar for back. And we've been doing that, I mean, quite a bit now. We've, I'm not sure if the, a lot of the viewers are um, aware of this, but we've been holding free seminars for a lot of people uh, in the area or surrounding area. And by we, I mean uh, Body Solutions, my company. Daniel Fabod's idea. Uh, I think he's 21st in the world in classic physique. And um, she was interested in coming, and we, we had her come up, and um, she loved what she learned. I mean, and that's what the whole goal was, is to get people who are – you know, great athletes to come in and, and, and work with us and see if we can help them improve in any way. Uh, through that, she ended up uh, meeting Sarah Hasner, which is a, a, a trainer of ours, and she also helps with uh, posing and stuff like that. So uh, now Sarah Hasner is her uh, figure posing coach, and then I will train I train her on uh, Fridays and help her with back, which is a lot of the stuff that she learned at the seminar. So it's kind of convenient for her just to come into Louisville because she already sees uh, Sarah as a posing coach. I help train her, and then she also has another posing coach, which I'm not too familiar with, but she'll tell you about. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but that's really how we met is uh, through the seminars that we, we hold at Body Solutions. Yeah, and we've had, I mean, numbers up to 30-plus. I mean, and it's all free for everybody. It's free to the public, uh, Body Solutions clients, Team Fabog clients. We've had coaches come. We've you know taught coaches. We've taught personal trainers, of course. And it's all about, like, just helping give back. So, like I said, we, we don't charge for these. And, you know, we do different body parts and stuff like that for people who maybe want to bring up certain areas over others. So some people go to certain ones. Sometimes they won't come to certain other ones that they're not really necessarily worried about. But, you know, the, the problem I think that a lot of people don't realize is, you know, you work out in high school and you kind of think that that's how to work out and, and you're doing it properly with form and biomechanics and everything like that. But the hypertrophy spectrum is totally different than what your uh, your football coach taught. That's kind of what we're there for. So we see so much inf- misinformation online because there is so much information online. Um, and we're just trying to debunk some of those methods by teaching the science behind biomechanics and stuff like that. So we, we have a good core group of people uh, mm-hmm. that come to these things. And then we have new people, it seems like, every every week. Or I'm sorry, we do it once a month. So about every month we'll have about three or four new people. We just keep building it. That's a big thing for us, too, is, you know, community. I mean, you know, 
I'm a, I'm a little aged here. So like back when the factory was still back on Hurstbourne, you know, that all the bodybuilders pretty much conjugated there. And then when that was shut down and of course it got purchased and moved, all the bodybuilders spread out. So the, there wasn't really a community as much as, um, as it used to be. And it's crazy now. I mean, we have a lot of up and coming athletes that are doing shows from all different types of coaches, all different types. I mean, coaches locally far away and they're coming all together to learn and we'll chat half the time about, you know, a half hour to an hour after afterwards, just get to know each other. And it's building that community up. I mean, there's people that never met that are hanging out like best friends now, you know, that came together through the seminar. And and that was totally Daniel Fabbod's idea. The Olympian um, was, you know, cause he, he moved to Kentucky from Texas and, you know, he spoke with me. He's like, man, it's like, it's just, it seems weird that there's not a bigger community here. And, and that's not a disrespect to the Kentucky bodybuilding community, but we just felt that it could be better. Mm-hmm. If we felt that we could bring people together from all walks of life that, and it only had to be bodybuilders. I mean, we're talking, we have people that are just general health people coming in, you know, uh, some of my 70 year old ladies come in for our clients of mine to learn. Uh, so we're bringing them together and they're, they're meeting 22 year old girls who are, just getting into bodybuilding. Like, I mean, and they're all friends. It's just a really cool, um, cool way of getting everybody together and getting to know one another and, and building relationships that, you know, never would have happened if we wouldn't have done it. You know, he mentioned it there, but tell, tell us a little bit more about kind of how you actually discovered uh, the, the seminar itself that you initially had went to. Like, where did you hear about that? Are you a personal trainer, online fitness coach, or gym owner on the verge of burnout? Are you wanting to grow your fitness business but can't add more hours to your hectic schedule? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. Well, like he had said, Richard said we were we connected on Instagram and it was all over his page and then body solutions page. Um, and so my coach, John Harris, Johnny juice one, um, he's out of Cincinnati. So while he's absolutely amazing and I have all my absolute trust in how he coaches me, we're not together. We're not in person, not one-on-one. Um, and while I send him my videos and he, you know, tells me correct this, correct that, um, at the end of the day, he's not with me. So the fact that I knew my back was an area that, you know, I needed to improve on, especially for my upcoming shows, this was perfect. This is a perfect opportunity for me to go and learn, hear from the best, and also obviously meet Sarah, who was going to help me with figure posing. Um, So yeah, I totally took advantage of it, (laughs) immediately messaged and was like, yeah, sign me up, like, I'm still TBD. I'm like figuring out, you know, if my husband can watch our little one and yada, 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 but like I have to be there. Um, And so, yeah, made it happen. And I'm really, really happy. I went learned so much and still like even today, like we did back and buys. um, And he's like, wow, you, you are like implementing all the things that we learned at the seminar. So Mm -hmm. it was great. Was there any hesitation? Like, okay, this is a community this part of it, I'm not really maybe familiar with as many people. At least I don't, you know, I've never met them face to face. Was there any, any of that for you? I mean, there's always a little bit of nerves, like going into any like new group environment um, or like social setting, but I'm kind of a social butterfly <laughs> um, on my, on my Instagram. And like, I'm just a very extroverted person. And again, to me, it wasn't like, oh, these people are going to look at me or they're going to like, you know, I'm going to feel intimidated or whatever. It's all just about soaking in as much as I could in, you know, the brief amount of time that I had um, at the seminar. So that's kind of what my focus was going in. How did you actually get in or even start to hear about bodybuilding? Yeah, so (laughs) um, my bodybuilding experience journey started actually in Chicago. Um, we went to an old school gym in Lincoln Park. It was like club fitness, um, but like an old, old LA fitness. And uh, there's a trainer there that came up to me, approached me one day and was like, Hey, have you ever thought about bodybuilding? And I actually was like pretty ignorant to what that even really meant. I was like, yeah, like you pick up heavy stuff. And they're like, no, that's more powerlifting. <laughs> so he started kind of like just giving me the rundown. He had actually just won his first show, um, giving me the rundown. We, I was like, okay, we're going to start this. We're going to start training. 
And literally, like, that was supposed to start, prep was supposed to start with me and him in, like, late February, and then again, COVID. Um, so all of that was just totally side-tabled. Um, and I was like, okay, well, now I'm just a pregnant lady, so <laughs> we'll see how this turns out. Um, again, moved to Lexington, joined a gym in Lex, uh, Proof Fitness, and that's where I started to really see, like, kind of the breakout of these different communities, right? So there's a large powerlifting group that goes to that gym specifically. And I was like, wow, like maybe I could, you know, tap into that. Um, and then that's when I met Jess Briggs, who's, um, she's a pro figure, um, bodybuilder and she worked out at proof and she was just telling me all about like her preps and her bodybuilding journey and her coach, Tyler Bedson, who I had heard previously, um, about on Instagram has a large following and a bunch of people that I knew from Moorhead state actually worked with him, um, as their coach. So I decided I would reach out to him and connect with him. And that's kind of how everything just started. Um, I was very transparent from the beginning. I was like, I will never step on stage. I, at the time I was like, I'm a 30 year old mom with a two, with a baby. I was like, I'm not getting on stage. And of course changed my mind. Um, <laughs> so then, you know, did my first prep in January 20, what year is it? 2024. Okay. So 2023, <laughs> I did my first prep from January, 2023 to, um, I did stop short about six and a half weeks out. Just wasn't the right time in my life. Um, stars in the line, uh, and kind of got away from bodybuilding for about a month and then found a different coach, uh, that you know, meshed really well with me. John Harris, like I mentioned, did a mock uh, prep with him late summer into the early fall, knowing mock mock prep, meaning no intention of actually stepping on stage, just putting myself through a prep, seeing how I mesh with this new coach and if this is something that we would want to do in 2024. And now here we are, what, five weeks out tomorrow from stepping on stage for my very first time. So this is my third prep, but this is my first time uh, May 4th will be my first time ever stepping on stage. A lot, so, of, a lot of nerves. A lot of coaches encourage it. Um, first off, to challenge your body and see, mm-hmm. you know, where we can take it. But also, like, the mental game of it. Like, the mental challenge of a prep is, if it's definitely as hard, if not harder, than the actual physical challenge of a prep. Like, And I think that's kind of what made me stop that first go-around. Um so yeah, I think a lot of coaches do want you to kind of go through a mock prep or a good coach has you go through a mock prep just to kind of see like, are things in your life yeah. at a point where you can can go all the way and step on stage and you're ready for that? Because the stage is always going to be there. So we don't need to chase it down. Like it's going to be there. Just, you know, reel it in and get on it when you're ready. You mentioned Tyler Betson and certainly one of the, you know, one of the bigger names in the bodybuilding and fitness community in uh, in Kentucky, you know, has a has a pretty good... Uh, you know, following has a pretty good name, you know, behind him in regards to like people know who he is and things like that. But when it comes to that, like, did you have any reservations of getting on with someone who, who is bigger and like, not necessarily like saying it's a bad thing, but did you ever fear like, okay, will I get lost in the crowd? Will I get, you know, is the attention going to be the same as it would be with maybe a coach who doesn't have as much going on? Like, how did you kind of think about that going into it? So, you mean when I switched from like Tyler to John? When you initially went to Tyler. Well, Tyler's Tyler's following. I like to say Tyler's like the biggest fish in the Lexington pond. And I would say like Lexington, Ohio, like mm-hmm. um, kind of all Indiana, like all the, the surrounding like regional area. Uh, I'd say he's probably the biggest fish. Uh, so I didn't ever feel like I would get lost in the shuffle with him. Um, and honestly, like it wasn't like just... I saw Jess one day and we had a few conversations and then I just like jumped in with Tyler. Like, no, it like Jess hounded me for months after I joined proof, um, to join, you know, to get on with Tyler, to at least reach out to him, have conversations. And I did, but I never started actually bodybuilding with him until I, I think it was like late June. Um, and I joined proof in like November and I met Jess like the second day I was at proof. So I didn't actually start with Tyler and for several months, um, and after all the conversations and she was just so intentional and like, I could just see her light up every time she talked about him. I knew that he was a coach that was like going to set me up for success and like had the best intentions for all of his athletes. So I was, I don't think I ever really like worried about that. In fact, 
I think I was more worried about that with John Harris because Tyler has probably 7,000 followers on Instagram and like a lot of them are very like in that bodybuilding community, close knit. If, if not his athlete, they like speak very high regards of him. John Harris has 120,000 followers and over 400 clients and over 40 uh, pros. Um, like his, his like file on like clients is huge. It's massive. And he's been in the business. He's like 47 years old. Um, he's got multiple pro cards, all these things. Um, so I was a little more worried that I get lost in his shuffle, but John was very intentional about when he messaged me on Instagram and was like, Hey, um, you know, I've noticed that you're no longer with Tyler and you're taking some time away. Like if you're ever interested and want to have that conversation, like I'd love to chat with you. And that intentionality for me, like just set us off onto the right like foot right away. For you getting in, you know, with a, with a kid and with a family, like, was that something that you were ever worried about? Like, Oh man, is this going to pull me away from the other obligations, my family, my time with them, like any of that? Absolutely. (laughs) So that is why I stopped my first prep, uh, a, a large part. Um, So I stopped literally Easter week. Um, My daughter's birthday, so that year Easter fell on like in in April. My daughter's birthday is April 6th. She was turning two. Um, And I was keto. I was, this is my first prep. And honestly, at about 10 weeks out, this is now about six weeks out, but at 10 weeks out, I had kind of checked out as a human. Um, I'm like a very bubbly, happy, like full of life and energy kind of person and like, but I also wear my kind of face and emotions on my, on my person. Like you can tell. Um, and so all my clients at proof could tell, like everyone around me could tell. Um, and one of those people being my husband. And then obviously like my baby could tell, like I was just absent as a mom, absent as a wife, absent, just like in general. Um, and so to me at that time, like I love bodybuilding. I love the sport of it. I love the lifestyle of it, but stepping on stage was not that important. I realized very quickly my priorities and I had to step away. Um, it had nothing to do with Tyler Bedson. It had nothing to do with hating the bodybuilding community or the bodybuilding community putting me, you know, in a certain way. It was the fact that like, I realized for myself at the time, again, the stage was always going to be there and I needed to prioritize what was the most important thing for me. Um, and that was being present as a mom for my daughter who was turning two in like four days. (laughs) So, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you being a competitor yourself and, uh, you know, having a gym and, you know, where your where trainers train there, there are other bodybuilders. I think you, as a bodybuilder and as a coach, you, you probably see both sides of this where it's like, I understand what they're going through because I go through that as well. What's really tough, and I don't think we've touched on it yet, is... You know, most people, especially if you're a national level competitor, you're going to start your prep at 20 weeks out. So you have no idea what your life's going to be like throughout mm-hmm. those 20 weeks. Like, so when, for here's an example, when I was going uh, to North Americans back in 2022, um, and this all happened within 16 weeks, I had to fire one trainer. I had one trainer quit. Um, I had two trainers take a vacation during my uh, four weeks out. And then Trinity High School bought my building a week out. Oh. So there's, you know, there's never, it's hard to say that there's always any like right time to do these things because you just never know what's going to happen. And example with what Lindsay just said, she was going through it. And then at 10 weeks out, these things started to hit and she just wasn't ready for it. So fortunately for me, those big things hit kind of more toward the show. And I'm like, okay, I'm four weeks out by now. I'm, you know, if I win this damn thing, I'm going to be a pro. Um, how in the hell I got on stage? I mean, my, my coach pulled my cardio cause I was so stressed out. He pulled my cardio at three weeks out and never put it back in. Wow. We stopped doing cardio. <laughs> I literally got on stage with zero cardio for three weeks leading to the show. And it was genius. It worked. I mean, I came in probably, um, about six or 7% body fat, which was not good enough to win. Uh, but the, the guys had size on me. That was a really tough show that year. Um, but you just never know what you're going to run into when you're leading up to these things. And in the same way with like business or anything else, like it's really hard. Um, you know, obviously uh, Xavier Hunter trains with me. Uh, he's one of my trainers and, you know, he has a show in four weeks, you know, and I'm picking up the slack for him because, you know, obviously as you're, it's a very selfish sport and as mm-hmm. you're getting closer to the show, the harder things get, the more tired you get, the more, you know, not in the present you are. It's a very selfish sport. So you have to deal with these things. And 
it's nothing you can really prepare for either because every prep's different. So, I mean, there's been preps where I didn't sleep at all. For, I mean, one prep, I didn't sleep for three days. I have a picture of it. It's terrible. <laughs> and then one prep I had that, you know, I probably got about five to six hours a night, which is, you know, for a prep for a bodybuilder, it's actually very, very good. <laughs> so it's hard to really even know when you're ready or if you're going to be ready. Like, and the mock preps do a very good job in weeding out the pretenders because some of these people can't even stay on a diet for a week. You know, I, I've had one client before, and definitely I'm going to mention their name, but, you know, he had, he had been with me for a whole year as a general health client. And he's like, hey, what do you think about doing a show? I'm like, we haven't went one week without you drinking on the weekends. Like, I mean, we can't just flip a – you're not going to be able to just flip a switch like that. Yeah. So the mock prep's uh, not a bad idea. Now, it's not going to tell you the whole story, though, because you don't have the stress of the show pending on you. It's not like you're like, you know the show's coming. That stress alone, you know, and you start seeing on Instagram, you start seeing these bodies that look good, and people are Photoshopping, and and you, we all know that we've seen that one person online. You see them in person, you're like, okay, that was not as near as good as I thought it was going to be. Uh, and then sometimes it's the opposite. You're like, holy crap, where did this guy come from? What the hell? He looks like this, now he's like this. Um so the mock preps, I think, is a great idea, but it does have limitations in that aspect. It's kind of in the same way. I mean, it is a practice, right? And it's the same way with practice. Like you can never, I mean, being an athletic background, you can never simulate fully that feeling of what if I miss this shot? Because mm-hmm. in yeah. practice, it's like, oh, I'll just take another one. Yeah. Yep. You know, no big deal. But I think it's, it's definitely something that I've gone through. Uh, he talked about like every prep can be different. Um, so like my first prep with Tyler was just so different than obviously the mock prep and my prep now. So my prep now has been, you mentioned five or six hours sleep. I get seven and a half hours every night. (laughs) So I like, I feel pretty good. Um, I have the most energy that I've had of all the three preps. I'm still very much myself present. Again, this is not my first prep. So I think that definitely helps too. Like once you've kind of gone through it, even though it doesn't mean the prep's going to be easy, you kind of have an idea of, okay, like this is, this is normal or this is going to happen or, you know, I'm going to have to push through this. Um, so I think, I think that that's something to think about too. Like as you get more seasoned into your preps and you go through more and more of them, they do become, um, more manageable. I'll say, I won't say easier. I'll say manageable. <laughs> I think you can just apply the lessons you've learned from previous things, right? I mean, it's, kind of the same with life i mean you go through a situation the first time you had no idea what to expect you're just see what happens the second time eh, maybe maybe you get to apply one lesson probably not because like you said every situation is different but you know your 10th time your 20th time going through the same situation now you're like oh i remember this from the third time i did it and i remember this from the 18th time i did it so it's just uh you know repetition is is definitely uh very important but it's so it's so always interesting to me because I get to talk to so many bodybuilders and um, just the journeys, different journeys that people have gone through. I mean, one guy and several people really, but but one guy specifically, you know, he does two shows and he's a pro. The next person does, you know, goes for goes for ten years and then turns and turns pro and then you know 10 years later they're on the olympia stage so it's like everybody really does kind of have that different journey for I, I think for some reason right like what what lesson do they need to learn what life experience they need to go through to make that last puzzle piece fit or just a long puzzle pieces along the way make those fit so it's important to remember at the end of the day you're choosing this sport you mm-hmm. know like you are choosing to put yourself through this um i had some wise words shared with me very early on in my first prep um, it basically was just like, you don't tell someone, like say you're going out to dinner with friends or family or whatever, you know, I can't have that or ah, I can't do that tonight because I have to be in bed by eight o'clock. No, you can, you're choosing not to because you're choosing bodybuilding, which is fantastic. That's awesome. Like that's your choice. Um, and I think my first prep, I kind of didn't focus on that enough and I think this go around like I wake up every day and I'm like yes I'm getting to choose to do 65 minutes of stairs and that's freaking awesome so I think at the end of the day like reminding yourself like you're choosing this is just super super important are you a personal trainer who wants to scale and grow your business online have you been coaching online for years yet don't know how to incorporate online into your current business model introducing trainer revenue multiplier the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. 
Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. We kind of talked about it before, but but the sleep aspects, and you mentioned, uh, I think actually you mentioned the whoop. And yep. what what brought that up for you? Was it the training aspect? Was it the sleep monitoring? Like what was it that, that made whoever brought it up first kind of bring it up? So I, I brought it up first, um, I believe, right? Yeah, because you have the Aurora ring. What's that? You have that ring. Yeah. Um, well, my coach made me get it <laughs> so um because he wanted to know my heart rate variability he wanted to know the um, aspects of my sleep my recovery all these things i started out with the whoop I, the reason i switched to the aura is because it, it kind of translates the data a little bit better for you uh as far as just you wake up it tells you how good you're doing um but it, it's amazing uh products because they're third-party verified which is very important because the accuracy of like a Fitbit or I think Apple's getting to a point where they're getting close to being certified third party where they're within 1% accuracy. I'm not sure how far along that is, but, um, but the key is the accuracy, you know, Mm -hmm. you, they, your coach needs to know what's going on within your body and you, for your own reasons need to know, Um, you know, sometimes you wake up and you're like, man, you know, I didn't sleep at all last night. And then you actually look down and you're like, I got six and a half hours. Actually, that's not too bad. It's even a mental thing. You yeah, know? it absolutely is. It is. Um, especially with that, like I said, with the aura ring, because it gives you an overall score. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, I wake up and it's crazy. It's it, You wake up and it tells you, like, say if your, your score is like a 60, which is pretty low, and say, hey, you know, you're you're going through it right now. Maybe you need to take a day off. And you feel that way. And mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's almost like you wake up, you're like, man, I don't feel good. And then you look at your sleep score and everything together, the HRV and all these things, and you're like, oh, well, it makes sense now. Yeah. You know, um, it's nice to I kind of have, I feel like having a third coach, you know, it's like mm-hmm. you have your, your coach with the visuals and all these other things, diet and stuff like that. But then you have this metric that the coach can't do from either, even if they're local or far away, it's telling you all these other things that um, not only help your coach, but help you mentally. Yeah. I mean, when I got it, it was, it was just kind of something I was interested in. I saw, um, actually I got introduced to him after, um, they started posting Patrick Mahomes was yeah. wearing it in the Super Bowl and it showed like his stats when he was um on the game winning drive or whatever it was like his heart rate was so low like it's just it was just like oh that's really cool to kind of know in certain situations and that's kind of when I bought into it but um it is fascinating like when you see when you wake up and you're like oh I got it like a 92 recovery and it may just like it does it boosts you somehow I mean it just goes back to uh, that that placebo effect of yeah. like once you can once you someone tells you something, it, it really can get ingrained in your head of, of how you feel. Um, something cool that Whoop actually just started offering too is a um, if you're familiar with like Chat GPT, they have like a Whoop coach where you can like type in a question. What does this mean? How does this you know how does the heart rate variability translate into my workout today? Or so it's kind of cool on that aspect. You can uh, kind of ask a questions and stuff like that. But um, I'm glad it did that too because that was the main reason I left Whoop is because it, it was even as a, a coach and advanced as I was, I was reading some of these metrics. I'm like, how does this all translate? Like, yeah. give me an overall like, hey, tell me what I'm reading mm-hmm. and what this all means in a combined sense. And mm-hmm. that's what when I had it, they, they, they just didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so having that that aspect of the AI source, that's really nice. Like, hey, with all these metrics that you're, I'm looking at. Do I need to take a day off? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like the aura would just say, hey, dude, you know, you're going through some shit right now. You need to calm down. Yeah. So uh, now in prep, it don't matter. Like in prep, your your heart rate variability is going to be like a 20. It's going to be like, dude, what are you doing? You're dying. It's like, I know. Shut up. But um, during a bulking, you know, I was telling her on the way here, during a bulking phase, it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Because like people overtrain all the time during a bulk and you don't want to do that because your body's not going to recover. You're not going to grow. So, I mean, you might wake up one day and you just feel dead to the world, but you have back that day and you're like, oh, gosh. And then your your whoop's telling you or your aura ring's telling you, okay, yeah, you are trash. It's time to calm down. <laughs> so, I really loved having that. Uh, I haven't worn my aura ring in a while, but I need to get that back on because it is a it is like having a third, uh, third coach, but also it's kind of like having a support system. And uh, I've talked to Lindsay about this, like, 
your support system, and I don't think we've touched on it yet here, is the support system is just as important as everything else. Because, like, if you have a spouse that eats unhealthy, that's constantly cooking crazy meals, and um, they're mad at you for getting up early and leaving them with a the child or whatever it may be to go to your cardio, the support system that the aura ring gives you, and then, of course, the people around you give you, is probably one of the most important things during prep. It's like what I did when I was four weeks out from my national show is. Uh, I get basically I gave to my all to my ex-wife jewels like you know can you how many clients can you take how much and she basically took it all for me so even though I, I had to deal with the the two trainers going on vacation trainee buying out my building and all the stuff I was doing with going into the prep I knew that I didn't extra have to be at the facility training all these clients while, while all the trainers were, were taking vacations and stuff so mm-hmm. it, it was nice to have that support and I think it's you know, the, the people, if you've noticed, the people that do really well in the sport, it seems like they always have uh, either a partner or a group of people around them that are very supportive. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're doing for Xavier. You know, uh, you know, he's getting ready for his, um, his this year's pro show. I mean, the guy's 21 years of age, and he's been a pro for crazy. a year already. It's insane. And, you know, we, we support the heck out of him. You know, I mean, he comes sometimes comes to work, and he just falls asleep right on the couch. <laughs> and uh, I'll let him sleep, his client – Pulls in, I go over, nudge him, wake up. He gets up, he trains the client, he goes back to sleep. <laughs> 30 minutes later, I nudge him again. Hey, your client's here. <laughs> Time to wake up. That's uh, but like I said, I mean, you know, I, he definitely probably wouldn't be able to do it without, uh, not, of course, I'm not taking all the credit, but just me and some of the other, it's, the staff loves him too, and so does the uh, clients, and they're they're accepting of him. But, uh, but just that kind of go backwards, uh, all the stuff that, uh, the support system of like just the aura ring and the people around you, mm-hmm. you really need it. I mean, uh, Chris Bumstead's probably a great example how, you know, his wife was a former Olympia champion and she's out of the sport now, but she supports him and his dreams. And, you know, he talks about her all the time and how much, you know, that support uh, means to him and how much it's helped him achieve what he's been able to achieve. So, um, you know, it is a ve- very selfish sport and it is an individual sport, mm-hmm. but really it's not. Just your employer saying, oh, you want that Saturday off? No, that's yeah. whatever. Like, no. I mean, some corporate jobs probably tell you to go hit the bricks if you did it. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, so it is tough to find that situation. That's what I think a lot of people don't realize, too, is, you know, you have to have the right situation to even start a prep. Because the further you get in, the harder it gets. I mean, it's not like the hours get lower that you devote to it as you get closer. The cardio goes up. Sometimes the training goes up. The diet goes down. Uh, your sleep goes down sometimes, not even uh, by choice. <laughs> so there's so many things. Still, that she's still waiting on that to happen. <laughs> yeah, seven and a half hours must be a struggle. <laughs> That's too nice. <laughs> I will say with the whoop, you have to be careful if you're an analytical person or like and have a personality like I have. Where past the whoop, like if I want to get ten thousand steps in a day and I have nine thousand, and it's like right before I'm supposed to go to bed, I will think about it. I'll be like, I have to get another thousand in somehow. That's a panic attack. And the same thing is true when I got the whoop. I was like, I got to get 100% sleep tonight. When do I have to go to bed? What if I, you know, what happens if I wake up and I can't go back to sleep? So in some ways you have to like, if you have that personality, you have to kind of like dial it back a little bit in regards to the obsessiveness, I guess, because at the end of the day, like is a 98 going to be that much different than a hundred? No. But in your head, sometimes it can start to feel that way. Very type A. (laughs) <laughs> it also kind of saved your life in a way. I remember um, I couldn't even go to the hospital because of uh, COVID. I didn't have signs of COVID, but I think I'll suffer from heat exhaustion. One of the, the uh, symptoms of heat exhaustion is just a very uh, raised resting heart rate. Well, I was trying to go to sleep. I was very tired that day. and I was in prep for a show. I was like two and a half months out. And uh, at the time, I was training at the factory gym, and it was like 105 heat index. And I had a two-hour day I'd hit, and then I had, like, 45 minutes of stairs after the 20 minutes of hit. It was a it was a rough day. Well, my – I can't remember if it was the whoop or the aura. It was, like, 13 hours later, and it says, you're still working out. Oh, wow. My heart rate had never came down from, like, 180. Wow. Like, I'll be honest <laughs> Looking back, I'm like, I don't know how I'm even alive right now. <laughs> Um, but it was still tra- like my calories were like at 6,000 calories burned during my Gosh. workout or something like that. So I, I called the hospital and they won't admit me cause I don't have signs of COVID. So apparently I was just going to die, but, uh, <laughs> I ended up getting a bunch of water and, uh, I went and slammed a bunch of Gatorades and, um, 
I woke up the next morning and overnight it was like 90, which is still extremely high. But I slowly was able to come back down and thankfully so, because apparently unless you had COVID, you could just die. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. That's nuts from so many different perspectives. But, uh, <laughs> oh man, I've heard too something really cool that Whoop has uh, kind of implemented in over maybe the last year or so is like with um, with women trying to figure out like early how early can they figure out that they're pregnant? I can't, you know, I don't know all the science behind it and how they do it, but that's kind of an interesting thing, especially when it comes to people that are very active, right? I mean, just to know anything and everything that you can know to set yourself up for that, you know, long-term Oh, I think success. I've read about that where it's like, talk, it can like predict your menstrual cycle now. That's fascinating. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what... Or is uh, it when you're ovulating? Ovulating is... I think... Yeah, well, I don't know. You know <laughs> we won't go into that. Yeah, you probably know more about not stuff on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's crazy what technology is doing. Like when they started doing the blood oxygen levels, I was like, "What?" Like, I mean, it, it's crazy what technology is starting to do. Yeah. Um, you know, they better keep Apple at bay because if Apple could ever get all this technology and get it accurate, mm-hmm. I mean, they're gonna blow up like crazy because everybody already has the, or majority of people already have iPhones. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, I need to definitely, talking about it now, I really need to get that aura ring back on because I just love the statistics that it gave me. And mm-hmm. Like I said, it's like a it's like a dopamine booster. I think it was Amazon. They were trying to like do their own version of the Whoop or the Apple Watch or whatever. And um, I was like, man, I just, I, I love the fact that Whoop or, I don't know if aura ring is owned by their self or if they're of a bigger company. That's a good question. But I just love the fact that like, these small companies can specialize in these things because they're going to get the best people on. Like they're going to have the best scientists. They're going to have the, you know, Andrew Huberman is, is on as a part of like the breathing. Uh, he, he like leads you through breathing exercises on their app and stuff like that. So it's just really cool because not that, I mean, Amazon could do that obviously too. They have enough money to do that or Apple, but like it just feels more authentic when it comes from a company that, has a passion for it and isn't just doing it because, oh, we can make another billion dollars this year. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm, I hate to get, I'm hoping it's not political, but I mean, look what happened to ESPN after Disney bought them. Mm-hmm. I mean, ESPN, you fit, when you watch the ESPN broadcast, does it feel like the majority of those people are just into sports? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, like, it's well, not the same as yeah. it used to be. It, it used to kind Herman? of be more like nitty gritty. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's not a boomer. It's like they're reading a script, which they are, but like, yeah. um, now, Pat McAfee has kind of thrown a wrench into what yeah. I just said, but um, it just it is right. Like when it's it's it seems like when it's like kind of independent, just like a mom and pop mm-hmm. diner. Yeah. You know, it's going to feel a lot different than going to a Five Guys. Yeah. Um, it just seems like everything gets kind of repetitive once you get to the corporate world. But yeah, not you go too far down that rabbit hole. But yeah, mm-hmm. it just I see it totally what you mean by that. Yeah, I just and just being able to like support a company like that too is cool. Knowing that like. When I pay for this, hopefully, it's going towards creating a better device, too. Like a better, you know, like, once again, Apple doesn't, they could fund and create the, the, the best device of all time when it comes to, you know, nanobots swimming through your blood, probably. But they would even make a great phone. Everybody's <laughs> buying the damn thing. Even me. Like, it's funny, when I switched to Apple, I was pissed off. I was like, this is the craze that everybody's talking about. This is a piece of junk. And then after a year, I got so used to using it mm. that I never could switch back. Now I'm an Apple person for 10 years. But That's uh, funny. But, I mean, as a coach, how do you, like, manage people who may be thinking, like, uh, well, my technology's saying this or my whatever. Like, how do you manage the intuition side of of health and fitness and bodybuilding as well? Versus like this is what the metrics say. I mean, obviously you have to take everything into account, but I mean, at what level does just like the human intuition play into it? It's extremely hard because, like, we have an in body scanner, and the in body scanner that they say that water doesn't mess with the readings or anything like that. But if you have the same person scan themselves at later on in the day compared to dried fast in the morning, usually their body fat percentage is like two to 3% different. I mean, the, uh, that's probably what been one of the harder things is like, especially like people will go out and buy these $20 scales and think it gives them their correct body fat percentage. It's like for 20 bucks. Come on, man. Um, but that's where I, you know, good coaches, that's why you have to have photos. Now, the eyes is what matters. Like, you have to be able to point out the differences because, you know, I had one client, and I wish I could bring this photo up, but I had one client who hadn't lost a pound in, like, three months, and uh, she was starting to complain about it. 
I had all of her pictures, so I just sent her before and after for three months difference, and her waist had shrunk like three inches. I'm probably crazy. even more than that. It was tiny. Um, and I sent it to her. I was like, this is why I'm not lowering your calories. And she's like, okay, makes sense. <laughs> That's all she responded with. I didn't tell, I have to tell her. But um, it is really hard with the metrics because especially, you know, when you get into the point of prep where you're so far into it, and it's like, oh, my HRV is 20 or 22. Mm-hmm. It's saying I'm not sleeping. It says I need to take a day off. Duh, 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 duh. It's like you have to understand, like, these devices are not made for bodybuilders. I mean, they're made for athletes. Like, I hate to break it to everybody, but bodybuilding is not an athletic sport. The, you know, a swimmer, if their HRV is down low, that would make sense. But your job, literally, as a bodybuilder is to get to the lowest percentage of body fat possible or imaginable while still living. So your body is fighting you. Your body saying, okay, I'm trying to hold this last two to 3% body fat. So you don't die. And you're like, Oh no, I'm going to, I'm going to get down lower. It's, it's not made for that. So people have to take it with a grain of salt. That's why I think it's even better for bulking than it is for cutting. Because once you get down to certain, I mean, you're going to wake up every day and you're going to read that recovery score. And one day it's going to say you're dead. <laughs> You know, uh, um, you, are dead. <laughs> you are now dead. Good. <laughs> you should have listened to me the past 10 weeks. Um, so it is hard, especially in that aspect. Uh, I still have my clients use because I want to know, you know, all the variables. But that's what you're there for as a coach. You have to tell them, like, okay, this is just metrics we're looking at as a whole. Uh, perceived stress, all these other things we're factoring in. And this kind of goes back to what with her and, and John. John's a great fit for her. That's one of the best things about – uh, finding the right coach is a lot of times it's not even about brains. It's not about biomechanics. It's not about nutrition, um, anything else. It's, it's about fit. It's about can, do I feel comfortable sending a text message to this coach in the middle of the week? Cause something happened to me. You know, there was one coach I was terrified of, you know, I had something major happen in the middle of my week. Uh, I screwed up on my diet cause I had let some stress and some things get to me. I didn't tell him until check-in, which was four days later, because I was terrified of him, that I was bothering him. Mm-hmm. So, And he's one of the most well-known coaches in the nation. Um, so just because they're a great coach doesn't mean they're a great fit for you because you know certain people can just do a black-and-white thing and be totally fine. And then you have head cases like me who might need a little <laughs> bit more you know, attention. Um, and that's why like, I always tell, and I'll tell anybody this, if you're going to – if you want to hire a certain coach and they won't even take the time out to interview with you on the phone, that's a huge red flag because that tells you right then and there that if, if shit hits the fan, they're not going to be there for you. And just a, a 20 minute conversation on the phone, if they're too busy for that and don't even want that to get your business, what happens when you are, they already have your business yeah. or you've paid a year in advance. Do you think they're going to pick up that phone? No, uh, that'll be, a, that'll be a silent, you know? Yeah. So, um, that factors into a lot of it. The biggest thing for me was just like meshing with my coach in general. So where John Harris is at in his bodybuilding career, but not, not just that, like let's take that off the table. Like his life um, being in his upper forties, married, he has kids. He's done this for a very long time. Um, He lives in the gray. And that to me was super, super important. And I understand like 22, 23, 24 year old guys are like, no, give me the chicken, rice and green beans for every meal for 20 weeks. That's great. Um, That's not me. I have a two year old. I have a husband. Like I have to live in the gray a little bit. Um, And for me, like the main thing is the sport is it's like a lifelong journey. Um, Will I step on stage? Absolutely. Am I excited for my preps? For sure. Um, and I'm very type A, so when I'm in prep, like I am all in, um, following those parameters to a T. But like for me, it's it's living eighty twenty, or for really, I'm like more like ninety ten. Um, but that's John Harris understands that. Um, he's been in the game for so long. He's like, I have never <laughs> done a prep without cheating. <laughs> that's what he said. He told me when I very first was talking to him about like how he kind of operates his preps, and he's like, I try and find the most doable ways to get all of my clients to their preps um so they're not starving to death like you're gonna reach that point right like four weeks out you're gonna you're gonna be really hungry Mm -hmm. um but like i don't know just like the way he talked about it and the way that he made it sound like this is something that we can like you can do 
Um, and you're not going to like lose all the things that you're passionate about um, or your energy like will be completely zapped and you'll be gone as a human. Like that to me was a really big um, allure to having him become my my new bodybuilding coach. Now that being said, that wasn't like Tyler didn't do that. Um, Tyler and I did connect really well and I actually really connected well with his wife, Laura Bedson, um, who was also a figure pro and she was my posing coach. Um, but again, I just think that like you kind of take a step back and you can see like through a different lens, um, just like who you connect with, who you mesh well with. Um, and not that anyone is necessarily right or wrong, but it's just like the right fit. Well, somebody once said that bodybuilding isn't a suffering contest. There's definitely a balance there between like, how do I win? And how do I not hate my life, I guess, right? Yeah. I think there's also a piece for me, and this is completely, I actually just shared this recently with someone um, at my gym, but this is completely on me. This has nothing to do with Tyler, but I think going into that prep, I set myself up with like the biggest weight on my shoulders. Like everyone is watching me. Everyone wants me to win. Everyone's, you know, feeling like they're in your ear telling you, oh my gosh, like you're going to, you're going to kill it. You're going to be the best, you know? And so that just kept putting this weight and this pressure to the point where like right around, not, it was like 10, 11, 10, nine weeks out, how I count backwards. Um, I got to the point where I was like telling people like I was so afraid of failing. Like I didn't want to let Tyler down. I didn't want to let Tyler down. And it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, wh- why are you doing this, Lindsay? Like, what are, you, what are your real reasons for doing this? So that be- because you told people you were going to step on stage and now you're obligated and you don't want to let him down, like you have all the wrong intentions for wanting to step on that stage. And like I had to come to that realization, you know, it hit me like square between the eyes. Yeah. Like, okay, r- we need to redirect here. Mm. Take a step away. This podcast is sponsored by Smoking Gun Coffee, a veteran-owned coffee company that strives to give back to those in need. Don't forget to use code TWR10 for a 10% discount at checkout. And what do you think are some of those biggest things that you have, you know, on this this prep that you've kind of, I guess the mindset things you kind of mentioned, but, you know, other things maybe that you've implemented or other things that uh, they've just helped you make this prep something that you have enjoyed and have looked forward to for also your own reasons as well, not just somebody else's. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things that has kind of alleviated some of that pressure is the fact that I'm doing an NGA. So I'm doing an all natural show. Um, and I know people are like, no, you should do an NPC. And my intention is still to step on an NPC like stage and do a show, um, one day. But for now, like I think like getting my toes wet in the NGA, which is, you know, a newer, um, a newer like show uh, category. I don't even really know. Again, I'm kind of naive to the feder- called federation, federation, maybe. Yeah, organization. Maybe. Um, that has like just kind of eliminated a lot of that like extra extra stress because I'm not. I am natural. I'm not going to use um, any PEDs. So that kind of gave me like this major sense of pressure that like if I step on stage, I'm not going to be the biggest buffest girl. So I have to be the leanest, like most shredded, like tiny little person peeled peeled is the correct word person um which just created this whole extra level of of stress and i didn't need that cortisol levels were through the roof the other thing too is that like with john he sets up your meal plan so everything that you have you have options so you still feel like you're a human um every day i wake up and it's like okay which protein do i want which fat do i want which carb do i want um, and then like still obviously all of those falling into your correct macro counts, but you're still making those choice and that's, mm. choices and that's made this like a super pleasurable experience for sure. <laughs> Do you find yourself falling into, this is what I'm eating today because it's like yes. kind of I found that it's easiest. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Literally Richard and I were talking about the fact that like even though I have, I have choices, I think it's the freedom and the fact that I have choices, mm. but I still choose the same things. Um, I still have like my five ounces of grilled chicken every night, even though I could have uh, four ounces of 96 four lean ground beef. I could have broccoli every night, 10 ounces of broccoli, but I choose spinach. Like, you know, so I still choose the same things because they work and I like them and I digest them well. Um, And I think it's also easier on your body. But yeah, I think it's just the empowerment of like the freedom of, I still could choose if I wanted. Yeah, (laughs) it is so easy to get into those uh like figuring out how, okay, what's the best way to cook these? What's the best yeah. way to prep these? If you want to do, you know, longer term for a couple of days or a week or whatever. 
And when you figure those things out, it's like, oh, wow, my, my life just became so much easier. Yeah. Now I don't want to have to go figure out, you know, the best way to do this other, you know, food or food group yeah. or whatever. Um, I think that's like so like a prep thing too. Like in prep, you don't even have the energy to think about, oh, how can I like vary my chicken this week? Like, no, I don't care. I'm going to literally crock pot this and it's going to be like a massive amount and that's it. Like take out the creativity and the question mark and just make it kind of, you know, just super easy Mm -hmm. but i think though like if you're making bodybuilding long term like your lifestyle um i think you know there are so many creative fun ways to like add different seasonings and different ways of prepping things and that that's kind of what i enjoy in the the element of this of this sport so i went through a breakfast sandwich phase and i went through a grilled chicken wrap phase so those were like i had dave's killer cinnamon raisin bread (laughs) walden farms pancake syrup and then my eggs and my spinach and i put it all into a sandwich and i had a breakfast sandwich for like i don't know like six weeks (laughs) the very beginning of prep and then i went through a grilled chicken wrap phase too in prep so all those carbs have been taken (laughs) (laughs) um you know with the last really i guess counting down the weeks now really are you still i guess are you still in that mindset of prep is here and um like i'm just thinking about prep or has your mind shifted to okay i know prep is still here but i'm really thinking about the show and i'm really thinking about post show like wh- where is your mind at my mind is heavily on posing right now i mean like <laughs> i'm con- i'm like walking around in my house cooking dinner in my heels <laughs> like i'm just i really really want my routine to be like buttoned up um and, it, and i've never stepped on stage so i think that's kind of the biggest thing for me is how am I going to, how am I going to fare under the lights? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, so like, I know I don't have to think about going to the gym, getting my cardio in, killing myself when I lift weights. Cause I'm going to lift as heavy as I possibly can and, um, kill myself like that. That to me is turnkey. I've been doing that since I was three years old as a gymnast. Like I love to die in the gym. (laughs) Um, But I think for me now, it's like, oh, we've got to be in heels in a little tiny swimsuit and we got to have our smiles on and um, we have to look feminine and pretty, but also like hit these like badass poses. (laughs) So my mind is all on posing right now, like through and through. So working with uh, Sarah versus Laura, I mean, certainly everybody kind of has their own way of teaching and their, their own way of doing and then I guess their own way of teaching. What are some things that you've picked up from her? Uh, from Sarah, Sarah is straight up in one day and 10 minutes taught me how to pull my lats out entirely. <laughs> well, with the help of Richard, but I was um, a pretty big influence on that. Oh, <laughs> were you? Okay. Um, no, like literally it was, was it at the seminar? Yeah, that's, right. yeah. that's why you hired her. Yeah. Right, right after the seminar, literally I was like, I can never get my lats out. And Sarah was like, Richard, hold her camera. Cause I was recording it. So I could see, like, go back and watch and make sure like, um, you know, when I'm not with her, I'm doing it right. And she's like, hold this. And she came over and just like turned my arms, moved my elbows, yada, yada, yada. And next thing you know, I was like, I was jumping up and down in heels and I was in a swimsuit and I was like, oh my gosh. Um, so she's really taught me, um, mostly that, but just like, I don't know. I just, we mesh again, another person I just mesh really well with when I'm around. Um, so yeah. And I also have another posing coach who I haven't mentioned yet, but Andrea, she's a pro, NGA bikini competitor. Um, but she's a coach now primarily. Um, she's also in her, I don't want to say her the wrong age, maybe upper <laughs> young forties. She has, she's married, she has children. Um, but she also has done figure, but she's helping me with wellness. Cause if you know anything about the categories, bikini and wellness are very similar. Um, wellness just being like bikini with glutes um, so she's just teaching me all my wellness posing and she's fantastic too so and again she is specifically in the nga so she knows all the totally different unique things that the nga does in comparison to the NPC, which is a lot i'm learning oh yeah i was actually curious about what those differences if there were a lot of those differences is it oh, a lot of the posing is it yeah it's, it's, i don't even know everything that Honestly, like I just found out more stuff today um, of how they kind of run thing, but run things. But again, they're newer, so they're kind of also, you know, making sure that they're getting all their eyes dotted and their t's crossed when it mm-hmm. comes to like the shows. Um, it also depends for for their show specifically how many competitors um, they have for that particular show. So I'm I'm entering on May fourth and the eleventh as um, figure and wellness. So. 
I'd have to do two tea walks, which is like you go out, you do your little routine, um, and then come back. But because they might have like 15 competitors just in one category, I'm only supposed to sign up for or do perform one tea walk. So it's like, do I go out there and do a figure tea walk? Do I go out there? So it's just all these little things are just like, so different there's also three boxes that you have to go and like or mark so you have to go and stand on and do like your little poses or like an npc there's one um so yeah i'm still learning yeah. <laughs> all these little things that are going to be unique to these these two shows coming up here do you feel like your personality matches one of those better yeah. or do you feel like you maybe had to like <laughs> like sh- showcase that better like i mean in in traditional sports if you want to call it that i guess and somewhat in gymnastics it's that plays a role too i guess but you know in soccer and in other sports like it's like all right what's the perform like that's we only care about the score we only care about doesn't matter you know what your face is doing or doesn't matter but uh have you had to like really kind of bring that stuff out oh yeah well like in gymnastics is like you're a vaulter you know what i mean like you have to do all of them but like some some of the gymnasts don't. They only do like certain events. So that's kind of how I feel. Like I'm picking my event, and my event is figure. <laughs> I'm I'm very. I don't know. Maybe Richard should talk on it. He kind of sees from another outside set of eyes. Yeah. But like I see my body as very muscularly proportionate. Um. So I feel like figure. You, I don't know across the board. Like I fall into that category better than just like. Um, I kind of have to hide my shoulders and my arms a little bit in wellness. I'm a little almost too muscular up top. Um, but like the legs and the booty, the glutes, like that's emphasized. So I kind of hold that category from the waist down, but like from the waist up, I can't, I don't accentuate my upper body as much, but figure I can just do it all. I don't know. What do you think, Richard? (laughs) I I mean, I only, I don't know much about NGA, so I can only look at it from an NPC perspective, but NPC, she would definitely be figure. And she would be a borderline national level wellness girl because of how big she is uh, is up top and more uh, balanced. You know, uh, it's it's weird with judging because even at any level, it seems like the judging so out there. You know, I've seen wellness girls that have delts as big as me when shows, <laughs> uh, big shoulders, big you know whatever. So it really is hard to. It's a lot to do with like who's head judging that time and stuff like that. But balance wise, she's definitely more figure, a hundred percent for figure, but. Uh, she's she's going to do really well in wellness. I'd be shocked if she doesn't win both of them pretty easily. So it's my two cents on it. <laughs> so in your opinion, though, do you think maybe she has more of a potential in? Because it kind of sounds like you're saying maybe she has more potential in wellness, but currently maybe she's more figure built. Like, do you do you- well, with the with the NPC level, and of course we have to factor in that she's natural you know, the hardness does play a huge factor in figure because you're going to be at a lot lower body fat percentage in figure. And when you're cutting down, especially if you're a natural, you're going to have to do whatever it takes to hold on to that whatever muscle you can. Whereas with wellness, you can kind of leave yourself a little bit fluffier in the bottom, which can, which actually would help you if you carry your weight there, which she does. Um, I think she's still 100% figure if she wants to, if she stays that route. I think she does. I've seen her pose. I think she does a great job at hiding her upper body. In the APC level, your hair actually blocks your back, and they don't make you move it. Where in GA, I learned today actually that they make you move your hair. She's currently her traps are great, and that whole middle back, upper back is great. So at an NGA show, that might actually hurt her. Whereas at an NPC show, they might never even see it. You know, most likely they won't. Now, they're supposed to not carry it into the other, you know. Um, so if, like, you go in figure and they watch you in figure and mm. they see your back is amazing, they're not supposed to hold that against you in wellness. But I think we all know that that's probably not the case. But I would say definitely she's 100% a figure girl. Uh, if she wanted to do wellness at the NPC and be, like, a national level person, she could. Um, she just have to atrophy a little bit at the top. But like I said, it's based on who shows up. Mm-hmm. You know, if she's – the best there, she still wins. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of times that's what it comes down to is whoever shows up. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason it came out with wellness was because Brazilian women just couldn't fit a category naturally. They were just too bottom heavy to be in bikini. I know uh, one uh, lady, she was actually a former trainer of mine. Her best friend only cut for two weeks for a bikini show and she got second. She was from Cambodia and they said that her glutes were too big. She didn't even work out. Wow. She's cut 
cut weight two weeks and went, and this is when Derby, the old Derby show, mm. when it, the Kentucky Derby show was going around, when there was like 300 people, she got second in her class in like bikini class B. Wow. Didn't even work out. That's nuts. Just genetically, <laughs> she was a freak. Um, so if she runs into somebody who's naturally just like a, you know, I hate to just say it this way, but a Brazilian woman, because they're the ones winning all the wellness, you know, Olympias is, is uh, finishing one, two, three, or whatever, mostly Brazilian women. Uh, some people just have that natural bottom heavy look where she's more naturally balanced. So gotcha. I think definitely her future is in figure. If she wanted to do well as she could, but it definitely is in figure. If she wanted to kind of just achieve what she uh, naturally uh, is shaped for. And is there any, like for you, is there any intimidation in that sense? Like, because like, if you are like, okay, maybe more currently naturally in this, you know, gifted for this, but if I want to maybe, achieve the most I can achieve, I'll have to put in maybe more years of work to get to where maybe my current position is here with this other division. Like, I mean, have you thought about that? Yeah, I think right now, I mean, I'm not really intimidated by work. Um, I guess my biggest worry right, literally right now, comparing my uh, posing my hour of posing with Sarah. And then I literally go to an hour of posing with Andrea for wellness is I just, my biggest worry is that my wellness posing isn't going to be like smooth enough. Um, like you have to be kind of sexy with muscles in wellness. I feel like you have a little to more kinda, flow. Yeah, You gotta like show the glutes. You gotta show what you're working with, you know, where figure is, very kind of to me cut and dry like obviously you still want flow you still want to look uh very feminine and and, um elegant with your arms and your hands and all the things soft in that way but like at the end of the day like your muscle matters like Mm -hmm. it is fantastic and my biggest worry is that i might never be able to get the like smoothness of um a wellness you know the best of the best wellness competitors gotcha um, so she, I don't think I really show off my butt as, <laughs> as much as maybe others would, would do normally. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that goes back to like leaning into your strong points and your personality. And, you know, some people that I talk to, it's like, well, that's just maybe it's because they were in certain athletics or certain um, beauty competitions. I'm not oh, sure if that's yeah, what they're called, yeah. but like they're, maybe they're in that or maybe they're in cheerleading growing up. So it's like they're they're more conscious about the that flow and that movement and things like that to where maybe like a somewhat of a, like a more pure athlete in a, in a performance based sport is just thinking like, got to get this done. You know, it's more not robotic, but what's the word? It's just more methodical. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? As I, a, I mean, I, most of my childhood, I was 14. I was a very competitive gymnast. I traveled all around the country, competed nationally. Like I love gymnastics. I burned out um, and that's when I switched, but gymnastics is very like, I don't know, hard like hardcore you have to stick the landing you have to have your arms Mm -hmm. a certain way you have you know what i mean it's it's rigid it's not i mean it's not like you're doing all it's not a dancer it's not a cheerleader it's a very like i mean cheerleaders and and gymnasts are close but it's very rigid you know so Mm -hmm. i think that's where i get that kind of like figure hit the you know hit the back pose hit the side pose yeah uh like mentality so For sure. Definitely did not do well in dance when I was a kid. I was pulled from dance very young. <laughs> That's funny. You know, I just think the the movement of the body and, uh, I mean, there's definitely different different ways people, different things people do to stay loose as much as they can, you know, even if they don't have that, like, natural danciness about them. Like, being able to, you know, stay athletic in, in a, such a way that you can have that some sense of flow. This podcast is sponsored by Smoking Gun Coffee, a veteran-owned coffee company that strives to give back to those in need. Don't forget to use code TWR10 for a 10% discount at checkout. Obviously, being a trainer, you know, you're, you're seeing someone come to you that has these two kind of potentials to them. I mean, maybe even this even goes back to you as well, but, like, how much of that do you start to try to, like, work into the training like okay if i know we're going to go wellness then we need to start to go more in this direction or i know if we're going to go figure then i know we need to start going in this direction whereas if you're kind of in the middle right now it's more like all right how can we work to be efficient for both yeah and and since it's two totally different criterias like you could probably win a regional show pretty easily uh if you're good enough 
when you get to nationals, you're, you're not splitting. Um, the the shape that is required for wellness is far different than what figure is. The conditioning of figure is far greater. Um, what I always tell all the people I've ever talked to is at the end of the day, what do you want to look like? You know what I mean? Regardless of what your genetics are, what do you want to look like? And sometimes it's a hard conversation because some of these people are like, maybe they're a bikini person and they want to be figure. And it's like, well, okay, if that's the case, we're going to work towards figure. You're going to get your butt blasted all the way up to we get there. Even though you might be able to turn bikini pro next yeah. week if you wanted to. <laughs> right. Um, so that's at the end of the day. Like I want to look a certain way and I don't want any of my people that I've coached or trained or anything like that to achieve a look that they're not appreciative of. Cause we all got, most people got into bodybuilding. They just said, turn a switch saying, I want to be a bodybuilder. You know, they got into working out. They started feeling good about themselves. They're like, Oh, I want bigger delts. I want a bigger chest. And, and then all of a sudden that turned into something more. And then they started to get competitive with it. But at the end of the day, they want to look a certain way, uh, and feel a certain way. Um, that's what really, you know, with men's physique, that's what I'm really happy about that. Cause they, now they're judging legs. You know, they're, they brought the shorts a little bit and they're showing off a little bit more legs. I mean, I remember when I lost my pro card by one spot, the, the guy, and it wasn't the guy in my class, but I remember the class A guy was in the back and, um, he had a pair of dark sport shorts on, which are very form fitting if you have any legs whatsoever. And the guy was bagging in him. I mean, he had about three inches. I mean, you could tell this kid never trained legs a day in his life. For him, apparently, what he cared about was just winning a pro card, and that's fine. But I would never want to push that on somebody, you know, mm -hmm. to look a, do something just for to fit a criteria. And that's where I was kind of, you know, indecisive after October of uh, two years ago on if I wanted to do it again because the look that I put on stage, I was about 172 pounds, and uh, my cap was 175. But everybody who finished ahead of me clearly – barely made weight and then they ballooned up about 10 pounds or more before the show so when we all got on stage together these guys look 10 times bigger than me and so in my mind i'm like okay i want to look like i look not the way they look but what they look is they get me a pro card yeah. so what do i do now and i love classic physique i love it a lot more than men's physique um because you know the whole training your legs hard, you know it takes a grit that men's physique guys don't have, so or used to not have. Now they better have it, or they're going to lose. Um, so when they brought that back to men's physique, it's like okay, the cap they don't have a cap for MPC now, but if it falls in line with what pros are, then my cap should be one seventy. Well, I didn't have to diet very down very hard to make one seventy two. So now I'm a national level men's physique competitor if they put that cap on there where i was getting beat once again because i wasn't big enough gotcha. so the look that i want is a men's physique look and that's what they're rewarding for pro cards now so it makes sense for me to go back to it mm -hmm. you know i missed it by one one year and i missed it by i didn't get come close because there's only i finished six and that one that year was only the person who finished first one but now that they have that that weight cap, it gives me a lot better kind of understanding of where I will be. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas before you didn't know. I mean, somebody could show up like looking like a bodybuilder and get a pro card. And men's physique, you're like, what the hell. Yeah. Um, so, so, kind of go back. Like I always, you know, with, with Lindsay, if she she loves training up her body, she loves having big cap delts, which you kind of need a little bit of that in wellness. But if she wants that balanced look, then there's no point of pushing three leg days a week, which you should never do as natural anyway, but go for the look that you want. And then, I mean, at the end of the day, who cares what seven strangers judging you say? I mean, for me, I don't care. Like, I mean, yeah, I want a pro card. I want all these things. But at the end of the day, do I look happy when I look in the mirror or do I care what seven strangers who, you know, looked at 1,800 people that day think I'm not as pretty as the guy beside me? You know, I'm not going to care about that as much as if I achieve a look that I – I've always dreamed of. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't look at it that way, but I do. And when I'm saying that, I'm not saying that anybody else is wrong. Just me personally, I look at it as, you know, I don't want to look a certain way, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to do whatever it takes to look that way in order to please mm -hmm. seven strangers. But if somebody else does that, I have nothing against that. I mean, we all have a, a different journeys and we all have different priorities in life. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, I say 
That's fine. Yeah. I mean, there are people that are able to survive just off the social media presence of it. Uh, they're probably more looking for the financial aspect if they get build a good following. But the majority of those people never last. I mean, at, you know, if you, especially when you get in those four weeks out, like that's when you find out how much you really want it. And that's when you have to, like you just said, you have to know your why. And I don't care if you have to put it on something to, to remind you, whether it be the refrigerator, your rear mirror, if you have to study it before you go to bed, like you have to remember that because, man, there's going to be some tough nights. I mean, even if you, you know, even if you're a bikini girl, it doesn't have to get that lean um, and you slept well the whole prep, you're going to go through some shit. I mean, <laughs> um, it's just a matter of like, is this priority of what I'm doing this for worth less sleep? Is it worth, you know, my spouse being mad at me? Is it worth all these things that you have to deal with? Um and then some people, like I said, if it's more naive and it's more like just Instagram only, more majority of those people don't last. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, so many good good lessons to take from this conversation, and you know, I really appreciate you guys coming in and, and being able to have it. And it's really cool that you guys have that connection. That you know, I can kind of like because sometimes I'll have some a coach on, and we can kind of talk about like. Well, what about this when it's an athlete or an athlete? What about this with your coach? But when you can kind of like talk about some of that process together and like, okay, well, this is what we do and this is how we do the posing thing. And this is, it's really, it's, it's a unique thing that it's, we've never done on here before, but it was really fun. So I appreciate both of you guys. Oh, yeah, thanks. thanks for having us. Absolutely. And if, uh, if you know, both of you can, but if you want to start out by sharing any, any socials or website or, or any contact info for people to maybe especially local in the area to get a hold of you. Yeah, I think, uh, best probably way to find me is uh, body solutions.com. Uh, or I think my handle is body solutions underscore SM for uh, body solutions, St. Matthews. But, um, mainly for me is like, if, if anybody wants to uh, learn from some of the best around, I mean, we network with all the Olympians in the area. Um, and when it comes to these seminars and learn or even participate, you know, we, we've had, we brought in coaches, we've brought in trainers to help run these things. If you want to be a guest host or whatever, all of them are free. We do them once a month. Uh, sometimes they're in Stanford, Kentucky, uh, at, uh, Daniel Fabod's location. He has a phenomenal gym down there. And then sometimes they're here in Louisville, Kentucky at Body Solutions. But we would love to have the more of the merrier. I mean, we've had, like I said, up to 30 people. I think we can manage easily 50, uh, if we know it's coming. So, uh, all free, free advice. Um, you know, we're not trying to tell you what to do if your coach is telling you something different, but uh, just giving you a bunch of great information and from people who actually are very experienced and have been through it. So, yeah, so I'm on Instagram at flex underscore and underscore freckles. Um, my biggest thing is I have been av- advocating for women to get into the gym, to get into the weight room. Um, I'm not going to go into one of my posts that I made about the the women's only rooms because that's a little controversial. But my whole thing is like, y'all belong out there on the floor. Um, You know, don't have any fear or hesitation like, oh, I don't know enough. Well, first off, go up to someone, especially me. If you know me or if you follow me, come up and have a conversation. I have a uh, serious face when I'm lifting, but I promise you I'm very approachable. I have a big old smile on my face most of the time. So... Um, and you can always come and pick my brain, but like, I would just want women to feel empowered to get out there on the floor, to lift the heavy weights, to feel like they don't have to just go into some room or sit on cardio. Um, but yeah, like, like lifting weights has changed my life and, you know, I just want other women to, to feel like, you know, that, that same feeling. So that would be my one little, my little, one little plug. If you're tired of searching for a coach or trainer, somebody who knows what they're talking about and has experience, make sure you go check out the new Coaches Corner on weightroompodcast.com. You can find quality, qualified coaches to help you achieve your goals, whether that's in bodybuilding or just general fitness. Stop wasting time and start achieving your goals today. The link to the Coaches Corner is down in the description below.